Today we're checking out the Artist Guitars LP59 CSB. Let's see how it sounds. Welcome back folks, this is Shane, you are listening to the Artist Guitars LP59 CSB electric guitar. Let's take a look. Here's the guitar up close now, this is a mahogany body so it does have that traditional Les Paul look and also the weight that comes along with it. It's by far not the heaviest Les Paul I've ever played or anything like that. But yeah, I just thought I'd mention it, it's not super light either. One of the standout features of this guitar is Artist Guitars Bullbucker pickups. These are humbuckers. They can also split coil thanks to the neck volume control and the bridge volume control. And these have high tension and they feel absolutely amazing. I put this sort of, on, in terms of the experience, very similar to say some of the high end Epiphones, just in terms of how the pots respond and feel, as well as just how this guitar looks. It looks really, really stunning. As you can see around the edge of the guitar, we also have some single ply cream binding, and this top is a triple A flame or tiger stripe veneer on top of carved maple. Beautiful. The headstock also looks really cool as well. It has a very familiar kind of vibe to it. And check out the back. We actually get locking tuners, which makes this, in my opinion, a much more premium guitar than some of the other options out there on the market. And we also get a 22 fret neck as well with a rosewood fingerboard. This is a C-shaped neck, so if you like a little bit of chunk on the neck, you'll definitely get a kick out of this. It's not too fat or anything like that, so you shouldn't have any issues with it being too over the top. It's definitely not as fat as some of the Series 50s Gibsons I've played over the years, so it should appeal to most people. The pickup selection switch is what you expect. A three-way from treble being the bridge pickup, middle being both, and up being the neck pickup. Firstly, a massive thanks to Artist Guitars for sending this out for the review. If you want to see my first impressions video, I'll leave a link up in the cards, but this will be a full review, both pros and cons of my experience with this guitar. But overall, I think this thing rocks. If you want to find out more about it, links will be in the description below, and I'll cover all the stuff at the end of the video about what I sort of did to tweak this just a little bit from how it was out of the box. Let's do it.
All right, let's get into it today. I'm plugged into the Marshall DSL 40 CR amplifier. It's loaded with an Eminence Texas Heat. I have it mic'd up with an SM57 and also a Rode NT2A microphone, which is a large diaphragm condenser mic. We're gonna start on the bridge pickup. Let's give this a shot, just with some simple chord stuff. <laughs> Now we can also split coil these pickups by just pulling up the volume control. So this is bridge in split coil mode. Now over to neck pickup, we'll start split coil. Over to both pickups in humbucker mode now. I'm gonna start with the neck volume control down just a little bit, all the tones are all the way up. Sort of just brings back a little bit of snap just by rolling down the neck pickup. Now with it all the way up. Try both pickups now with split coil mode enabled. Over to some clean tones. Now I just found out by searching on the internet that you can actually play a Les Paul clean. That's just a horrible joke, but let's get into it. So this is neck pickup in humbucker mode. Beautiful. Now over to bridge. Nice clean tone and over to both pickups. Here we go. Let's try both pickups now in split coil mode. Sounds really cool. Not bad. Over to bridge split coil. And over to neck. Let's have a listen to the difference between split and back to humbucker. And split. All right, let's check out the tone controls, but I'm gonna do this with a little bit of drive, so let's set up the amp. Now over to the ultra gain setting on the amplifier to test out the tone controls. This is bridge pickup with the tone all the way up in humbucker mode. Tone up, just up from off. And 
and all the way up. Now, I'm actually using earplugs because the amp's cranked. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm having a hard time hearing that in the room, what the difference is with the tone control almost off. If I turn it all the way off, you're gonna hear a huge difference, but it's, uh, I guess, maybe not that obvious, at least most of the way down compared to all the way on. It sounds very, very similar, but this is with it all the way off. I can definitely hear a difference even with the earplugs. A little bit more. It feels like it opens up really quickly back to pretty much where it was. Now there's one more thing I want to try. I've got the wire pedal on the floor. Let's crank that on. Both pickups and with neck pickup down just a little bit. It's now being christened. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, my name's Shane. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I'm gonna go over some of the pros and cons about this guitar, but a massive thanks firstly goes out to Artist Guitars for sending this out for the review. If you wanna find out more about it, links will be in the description below. So what do I think about this? Now I've had a chance to test a whole lot of Epiphones recently. I own a Tokai, I own, I've owned Gibsons, I've owned a whole lot of guitars and tested so many over the years. So where does this fall kind of in the market? In Australia, at least, it's cheaper than an Epiphone Custom Pro, but it's around the same type of quality. I recently reviewed one. It was a really great guitar, that Epiphone, and this is very, very similar. The push-pull pots feel very, very solid, more solid than much more high-end guitars that I've tried with these in here. The fret edges on this guitar are flawless. The binding's great. The fact that it's also got the locking tuners is a huge win. The neck feels good in the hand, and I love the fact that I didn't even notice that it wasn't, or it didn't have a scratch plate until today. I've had this for a couple of, about maybe about two weeks now, and I played it on and off, and I was just like, something about this di is different. So I grabbed my uh, Tokai out of the cupboard. I was like, oh yeah, mine's got a scratch plate. I actually prefer it without it. You know, I've kind of avoided taking mine off, but um, yeah, I really dig the fact that it just looks fantastic. The finish on this thing is beautiful. You know, I said that on my first impressions video, just how great it felt in the hand and how it looked, you know, it was really, really nice. So I wanna talk about a couple of the things that just weren't quite right out of the box, but it's no, by no means a deal breaker. And I mentioned this on my unboxing video. The bridge pickup sounded fantastic, but the neck pickup was way louder than the bridge pickup. So what I've done, and you've heard it in this video, I've actually lowered the neck pickup down. I've brought the bridge pickup up a little bit but it's nowhere near touching the strings or anything like that. They just weren't really balanced properly. It's as simple as grabbing a screwdriver and turning it to lower or raise each of the pickup sides. And that was it. I also noticed over here on the B string, it was just pinging a little bit when I was tuning up. It's not a deal breaker either. Nice and easy to fix. I just grabbed a gray lead pencil, put a little bit of that in there and I was good to go. The tuning stability has been great. The feel of the neck is awesome. I would have a hard time telling the difference between this and my Tokai, which is made in Japan, a much more expensive guitar, and I would have no hesitations taking this out to a gig and using it. Because of the tuning reliability, the switch feels great as well. This actual switch feels better than on my Tokai guitar, which is, yeah, one of those things. Now, to give you a little bit of the backstory, I was sent two of these prior to now. This was months and months ago, maybe six months ago, and I sent them both back because they just weren't really good enough to review or to sort of put on the channel and be confident that people will get a good guitar. My understanding is they've got a new guitar manufacturer and this is such a huge upgrade over anything I've seen from Artist Guitars. I would put this at the top of the pile for any of the guitars you've seen on my channel from Artist Guitars, not because it's the newest one in or anything like that, but because it's by far the best. I can't fault this at all. It is absolutely stunning, as good as it looks, 
on camera is as fine as it plays. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that. I just love the fact they've got the locking tuners. Quality control is fantastic on this thing. And overall, it's an absolute beast. This is an absolute keeper. And uh, yeah, massive thanks to Artist Guitars for sending this out. Let me know what you think of the tones. So if you're looking for a guitar that has a bit of a chunky neck and you really dig that 50s style vibe, I guess the main difference is between this and sort of like a traditional guitar would be the fact that we have the push-pull pots, but it's a really good addition. Whether or not you're gonna use them or not is a whole other thing, but they're actually usable. You know, if you've been watching the channel, I've tested some guitars where that is pretty much useless. On this guitar, I thought it worked pretty well, especially on the bridge pickup for some of that rhythm stuff. But let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching. If you wanna find out more about this, links will be below. Thanks again. See ya.